Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. We're back with an old friend who is looking sensational. Jane McDonald, how are you? I'm really, really well, thank you. Actually, you're looking quite good yourself. Well, we are both delicious in our own way, but I think you're doing slightly better than me. I've just seen a picture of you, and it's remarkable. I mean, it almost doesn't look like you, certainly not compared to the Jane we know from the cruise in 1999. It's been a bit of a shock, to be quite honest. And I know what everybody's going to think straight away. She's had surgery. I just know everybody's going to think she's been in and had a nip and a tuck, and I haven't. (laughs) I have not had a nip and a tuck. I know that because I've been away for a while and out the, you know, the, everything for, for such a long time. Maybe like, she's been in there, she's had it all done. Look, I haven't. It's, it's literally been a boot camp with cats, which made me really torn up and lose quite a lot of weight. And then I've omitted something out of my diet, which I can't tell you about until January. But there's something gone out of my diet and it made me lose that extra half stone. You know, you always get down to away with exercise and then there's an extra half a stone that you can never ever lose uh well i found the secret now and uh i will share it with everyone soon you talk about surgery and so many do opt for it in show business is it something you'd consider or having done it the hard way do you now see that this is the way to lose weight and look as good as you possibly can listen i'm all for looking as good as you can when you want and surgery is good for some and i would never say never you know, I mean, I'm looking at myself now, I'm quite happy, but, you know, three years' time, I might think, oh, no, darling, get yourself over to someone. Um, I don't judge anyone for, for me- trying to make themselves look better. And I've learned something as well, Alex, which is, if you look in a mirror and you feel better, then that's all that matters. Mm. So that's, that's the main thing. And if surgery is going to make you feel better, then go for it. You also appear to be very happy. I mean, in the picture, you look content. I know that's a strange thing to say, but is that part of it as well, that you're also happy in real life? Yes, yes. That's, that's taken a lot of sorting out. You know, we, we all go through ups and downs in life. Um, and I think the downs are absolutely vital because when you are on an up, you realise the difference. And I think, you know, now I don't... I'm, I used to be afraid a lot of, you know, my life had a lot of fear in it. I mean, you know, you know me very personally. Mm. And um, I look at things and I think, my goodness me, am I going to really put everything into this again? Am I going to do this again? But yet, if you don't take chances, you're never going to, you're just going to stay the same. And I realise that in life now, that why are we always playing so safe? So I don't play safe anymore. But the thing is, as well, you have to get rid of the fear. What's the worst that can possibly happen? That's how I look at it now. I look, right, what's the worst that can possibly happen? And I work back from that. So I always think, right, that's the worst scenario. And then when it doesn't happen, because 90% of what we worry about never happens. Mm. So I, I look at it now. And then everything else is a bonus from that. So that's how I look at life now. And also I spend an awful lot more time with my partner. And I think that has been missing um you know everybody knows i was stung really badly uh in the past and it's taken me an awful long time to get over that um but i've got a really lovely partner who um i've realized you know loves me and i love him back and that that's a great that's lovely to have that in your life We'll go through what you just said bit by bit. I mean, you talk about risk. You have literally gambled hundreds of thousand pounds on CDs and tours in recent years. Was there ever a point you thought, no, I'm just going to keep that in the bank and go on I'm a Celebrity and give it all up? (laughs) When you look at it like that, it seems so, why on earth does she she do all that? But I can't. It's something that's in me. And I can't stop trying in this industry. And... I don't know what it is. I don't know why I keep doing it, but I keep putting everything I ever make into trying to forward myself even more. And also, I've got a really fabulous fan base. And if I don't feed that fan base, they will go and find someone else. Mm. So I think you have to... It's like a drug. You just have to keep doing it. And um, I, I, I'm singing better than I've ever sang. And uh, and I'm thinking, why why waste that? And it's funny, Sue Ravy, who you know, mm. when I was on television, 
she said to me one day, don't leave it too long because all of a sudden you'll wake up one day and you won't be able to sing as good as you can now. You can always go back into television. And I thought, she's, she's a wise bird, that, yeah. you know. And there was a lot of people gave me a lot of very good advice. And I sat down, and these are people that I listened to. You know, whether it's my mother, Sue Ravy, or Ed. I listen to those people because I trust them. Mm. Loose Women was the thing you did for 10 years that made you a household name people fell in love with you through that and the cruise you chose to leave it I saw Carol Vorderman last week said she left because you can only take so much Janet Street Porter in your life for you I know you wanted to get back on the road do you miss that show at all? Of course I miss it I will always have a fondness uh, for Loose Women Uh, it made me uh, a a lot of new fans and you know I, I left with a very good heart from Loose Women. Um, And I'm still in touch with with everyone. It was a great part of my life with Loose Women. And I would never, ever say anything detrimental about it. It was was a great, great time, a great 10 years. But everything comes to an end. Mm. And I think it's doing great now with the new people involved. Um, And I was part of an era, you know, when it was me and, Gif and Denise and you know the, the old team I feel as if I was definitely part of the old team Could they tempt you back? Oh um, I don't think so I think it, you know my mother always said never go back <laughs> <laughs> and she's one of those wise women so you know I, I would love to work on ITV again but perhaps on something differently This year has been a tough year for you. We talk about Loose Women and we think of Linda Bellingham. I know that not you for six. You did the eulogy at the funeral and that was a really tough town. Do you think that was another part of this sort of rebirth of Jane MacDonald, that it makes you realise you're not invincible? Yes. And Linda was very instrumental into the career change for me. You know, a week before she died, I, I, I spoke to Linda and she gave me a lot of good advice and one of them was to get back into musical theatre, try musical theatre. She's the reason I went into Panto, she's the reason I went into Cats and I'm really pleased that I took that advice because I had the best time in both Um, and I I listened and I thought, she's right, she's right. She was a very wise lady with Linda Bellingham and and that's why I came out of television and, and went back into theatre and I think personally it was a very good move I'm not saying I'm never going back to television I've I've had quite a few meetings already this week about different shows that are are being developed for me right now which is very very exciting and I hope I do go back onto television but the singing is is what I live for singing and performing is if, if you're not a performer I don't think you understand it it's it's in your soul you've got to do it and my mother once again I know I keep mentioning my mother but she's a wise lady and she would say if you don't use it you'll lose it yeah. and I've always got that in the back of my head so I'd, I'd like to keep singing as, as well as I can for as long as I can I know that period during the time of Linda's loss was terribly difficult for you because it wasn't just Linda. You were surrounded by great sadness, family members and other friends who passed away. Is there a turning point at 50 where you sort of reevaluate your life? I think you do. You think, one, you're not invincible. Two, to stop worrying about little things that, you know, are not really that important. And I think that was a big... Because I used to worry about everything, you know, and think, well, oh, what if that doesn't happen? What, what if that doesn't happen? What if that happens? You know, and, and you, you do. You, you tend to worry all the time. And now I just think, oh, what the heck? If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I have turned a massive corner because you just never know, do you? And I look at now, I don't think now of what I've lost. And, and trust me, I lost four extremely dear people at the same time last year. Um, and now I think, what have I got? I don't think of what I've lost. I look at what I've got left. Mm. And I've got my mum, and I've got Ed, and I've got Sue. I've got people who I love dearly. And I think it's made me realise, look after them, and they'll look after you, and be around a bit more. And I think that's been a big step for me, is to be around just a little bit more 
and uh, and not concentrate so much on work, but you know, sit down and, and have a Sunday lunch. I've been doing Sunday lunch, which honestly I've never done in my life. I've never done that. <laughs> um, and I've learned to cook, and I've I've done it, and it's it's been lovely having people round. And then we look at. And then we look at the year on stage. You did Cats. Andrew Lloyd Webber turned up. Cameron turned up to see you in it. And you had, I think, universally rave reviews. I did not see one negative comment about your performance in that show. Was that nice for you to have credible affirmation that actually you can sing as well as any West End star? It was absolutely lovely and very humbling. You know, I worked with an amazing cast who were all the top of the game in the West End. Uh, These were people who... um, I, I looked up to and they accepted me in as one of their own and and you know Jane Quinn who I've become a really good friend with said we actually watched you grow right from the day you came in and it was amazing to to watch you take every bit of direction on because I had a thirst for it I wanted to be the best I possibly could just to prove a point I mean you know as well as I do Alex this has been 17 years in this industry and I'm still having to try and prove that, I, I, you know, I'm here. Mm. It's, you know, when you come from a reality show, um, it is very, very difficult to keep proving yourself all the time. And I, I've done cats and now, I know it sounds daft, but I've stopped trying to prove myself. You either like me or you don't. If you like me, come and see me because you'll get a phenomenal show. If you don't, fine, go see somebody else. I'm not so bothered now about the people who don't like you because there's always going to be lots of them. Um, I just concentrate now on the people who do. It's like a baggage is lifted when you have that theory, isn't it, that you do what you do and those who like it will find you and those who don't can go and do something else. Yeah, it's like a realisation and it's like a switch that goes on and you just think, oh, blimey, it's that easy. It's that easy. What I know is I get a complete buzz and a joy from doing what I do. Yes, it's a very expensive hobby I've got. But when you get it right, Alex, it's the most amazing feeling ever. Um, and you've seen the reaction from my audience. Mm. It's, it's, it's something I can't even put my finger on. It's, it's just a, it's a two-way love if you like. Yeah. I love the fact that they're there and they're enjoying what I'm doing and they're loving that I'm there. And and that's what I'm concentrating on now. And it was a big realisation when I was in Cats because I so many people saying, please don't stop touring. Please don't let this be the end of the Jim McDonald show. And that was very humbling because people get a lift out of that. And But, you know, I will be putting memory in my show now uh, and that's going to be a very exciting part for the new tour oh I've just said it new tour (laughs) there's a new tour coming when it is going to be next year Um, I'm in the birthing uh, part of it now it's going to be spectacular because you know I'm putting everything into this one and I know I've put a lot in before but I'm putting everything into this so um, new new arrangements uh a whole new, a lot of new band. There's going to be new band, so um, yeah, it's going to it's going to be great. You mentioned the word birthing. Has there ever been anything you've been interested in having a mini Jane McDonald to continue the legacy? No, do you know it's so funny. People look at you with, you know, when they say, "Oh, you've got you haven't got any kids," you know, it's it's like a, it's like, "Oh, you must be so upset." I never ever feel that I've missed out on anything because I haven't had children. Um, I'm very maternal to a lot of people. And to be quite honest, I look at my life and if I'd have had children, it would have been a completely different life. Um, And I'm quite happy with the one I've got. And I don't feel as if I've missed out because I haven't had children. If we look at your last 20 years, there certainly hasn't been time, has there, for you to be a mum? I mean, you're so busy, you're so regularly on trains to London, on tour, on the road. Was it a a deliberate compromise you made, or was it just a choice that you you actually didn't want kids? If my life had had a different career, I would probably have had a household. Hmm. Because, as I said, I'm quite maternal, and I look after, I mean, even the cast on Cats, I was like the mother. 
you know, and I loved it, and I loved that part of it. But, you know, we're all put on, on this earth for, to do different things, and I think there are some extremely great mums out there, um, and, and I take my hat off to them. I, uh, unfortunately, I'm not one of them. Um, it's nev I've never had that gene that clicks in my brain that says, oh, my God, I need to have a child. And a lot of women get that. Maybe I'm just a bit different, um, but I, I've never felt, oh, my goodness, I need to have a baby. I've never had that, that moment in my life. But I have had things going, I need to get back on stage. I need to get another album out. I've had that need, but I've never had the need for children. Does that sound really bad? No, I totally get it. What's it like looking in the mirror at 50 and being sexier than you were when you were 30? That's on the yard. That's on the yard. You know, no, I've got the pictures to prove it, Miss McDonald. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Um, I must admit, I feel more myself now. It, it, I think it's just taken me longer to be at one with myself. And there's a lot of people out there who feel that there's something missing in their life, and that you know, and I think that's the people I play to a lot. Um, but all of a sudden, the, the, there's like a, a light goes on in your head and you just see things quite differently. And that has just happened this year. Um, and it's, it's, it's been a, a big revelation for me. And it's great looking in the mirror at 50, 52, actually, and, and thinking, hey, you look all right, because I've not really done that before. How did you view yourself when you were on the cruise with that perm and those dresses? I mean, it was almost like a different person. I mean, the voice is similar, although I think your voice is better now. Um, I think you've grown as a human being and a personality, but physically you're unrecognisable. Truly, if you put you two in the same room, you, people wouldn't even think you were the same person. I agree. I agree. I think looking back at that person there, I was very naive. I was green. Um, I had no idea what was going to be ahead of me. And I, I look at people in the industry now and I worry for them because it's hard work and it takes 100% commitment. And that you have to make a decision to do. If you think for one minute that it's been an easy ride since the cruise, it really hasn't. Um, maybe I should write a book about how difficult this industry is mm. to keep afloat. Um, I know I've had a few people ask me to write one, but I still don't feel as if I'm there. I feel as if I'm always going on to the next step. I, I still don't feel as if I've made it at all. And I, I don't think any artist does, really. I sent you a screen grab of the Radio Times Celebrity Rich List a year or so ago, and you were in it. I think you were in the top 20. You have made a considerable amount of money. You've been a TV star. You're still a current uh, huge pull in the theatre. You're a star of Cats. At what point will you have made it? What will be the moment you'll go, OK, I can relax now, I've made it? I don't think I ever want to be in that situation. Right. Because that's when the hunger stops, doesn't it? That's when it, you know, if, if you're still striving to get there, then you've still got goals. And I, I truly believe that if you set goals and you reach them, that you haven't set them higher, high enough. You should have, you should have gone for more. And, you know, my expectations of myself are far greater than anybody else could have. So that's, that's probably what keeps me so focused in what I do. Um, and, and if I ever lose that, that's when I'll have to give up. You're looking great. You're sounding great. You're still working. You're on TV. You've got the theatre show. You've just come out of Cats. It's going pretty well, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> when you put it like that, yes. But I'm, I don't look at what I've done. I'm always looking what I'm going to do. So I've, I've done some amazing things in my life and I'm very, very grateful. But that's past. I live in the present and, the, and I've got to think about the future. And mm. that's, how I, that's how I exist. Um, I think an awful lot more about the present now, which I didn't do before. And that's since that year of loss. I look around me every day and think, oh, wow, 
that's great. Look at the sunshine. I'm looking outside now and looking at this wonderful day, mm. which I would have not seen before. I've sort of slowed down enough to smell the coffee now. But I'm still thinking, right, what we're doing now. And, and it's, that's an exciting place to be in my life. We're revealing your new look today. Is it still shocking for you when you see those pictures and realise that's you? Yes, I think you were the one of, I mean, you were the first person I sent it to. And because uh, I couldn't believe that was me myself. And even the photographer, Nicky Johnson, went, oh my God. Lee, Lee Dinner did the makeup, who's worked with me for 10 years, gave me a completely different look. And of course, my hair's a lot longer now, I haven't got the fringe. I mean, I had the same look for about 15 years, didn't I? I had that, that mm. sort of fringe, big hair look. I've still got the big hair, but it's a lot longer. It's a different colour now. I'm slimmer. I'm happy. You'd never consider swapping your 52-year-old self for your 30-year-old self? I would only do it if I could take myself back with the knowledge I've got now. Do you know, it's yeah. that old cliche saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yep. If I knew now what I knew, <laughs> if I could have only taken my brain back. Um, but life's all about timing, and I've realised that. And it doesn't matter if you're 30, 50 or 70. If the time is right, it will happen. And that, I mean, look at cats with me. Who would have thought I would have been starring in cats, belting out memory um, at 52? I certainly wouldn't have been, you know, and, and I enjoyed every minute of the challenge and I took it head on and I loved it. Is it fabulous being 52? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, I'm, I'm probably the happiest I've ever been and, and a lot of people get to 50 and start getting depressed. But then again, I look at my mother and she'll say, you know, 50s is the best time in your life and she's always said things like that and then she'll get to sit. 60 is the best time in your life. <laughs> you know, but my mother's 84 now and she's still going strong. She's still up and goes into town every day. You need something to get up for every morning. And I think that's what most people must find, is something to get up for on the morning. One date we can announce for next year, you're coming to Blackpool to start the tour, which will continue later in the year. You're going to be back on TV in January. Can we give the date for Blackpool? Yes, we can. Blackpool for me is, I just absolutely love it. And it's going to be on the 30th of June. And it's going to be for one night in Blackpool. Just to say thanks to Blackpool and thanks to all the fans that came to see us. And I will sing Memory that night. Jane, it's always lovely talking to you. And this has been truly one of our most interesting chats and one of our most honest. And I thank you for your time. And we wish you the best with the tour. Your website, jane-mcdonald.com, is the website to go to to get all of the ticket information for the tour and to keep in touch with what you're up to. Great to talk to you, Jane. And you too, Alex. Thank you. Hello and welcome to another exclusive review with me, Alex Belfield, here at CelebrityRadio.biz, where last year we had over 8.6 million minutes viewed on YouTube. This week we've travelled to Blackpool to review Cats, the musical by Andrew Lloyd Webber, starring Jane MacDonald at the Blackpool Opera House. It's not very often that the casting of a musical makes national headlines, but it did when Wakefield's Jane MacDonald was confirmed as the Lord's new Grisabella in Cats at the Blackpool Opera House this summer. What viewers to Loose Women may not realise is that Jane MacDonald is a world-class vocalist and the epitome of a leading lady and musical star. Cats has wowed its audience for over 30 years. What's surprising is that here in Blackpool, many of the audience had absolutely no idea what to expect. This is not a musical in a traditional sense. It's fundamentally a dance show with music. At times, this fast-moving story is almost hard to understand. This is a hugely elaborate play with exceptional dance and some epic music. The hugely energetic, talented and enthusiastic cast tell the story of a community of cats from the coolest to the most senior of paws. The live orchestra are hugely impressive, offering almost every genre of music from showstopper, jazz, classical to rap. Most famous of all, Cats is defined by its biggest hit, Memory. 
It not only steals the show, but embodies the pathos and passion of this musical. With lyrics based on the old possum's book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot, Andrew's score is raucous and diverse. Visually, this is a masterpiece in places, especially in the final 20 minutes of the show. You cannot fail to be impressed by the imagination of this non-moving set added to the remarkable harmonies and brilliant lighting. We all know that Andrew Lloyd Webber writes the most gorgeous tunes in the world, but he equally seems to love to provoke, annoy and challenge his punters with almost unlistenable, piercing, musically incongruous, loud and angry shrieks of sound. There are many examples of this throughout Cats. Thankfully though, sanity is restored at the end of both acts with arguably his greatest creation ever, Memory. This is a powerhouse anthem that requires a true vocal star to carry it off with precision. Thankfully, they hired a Blackpool legend, TV star and hugely popular personality throughout the UK. I truly feel this six-minute masterpiece is a career-defining moment for Miss MacDonald. The role of Grizabella is not the star of the show as such. In fact, she is on stage for less than 20 minutes. However, in this cast, Grizz, without question, steals the show. Jane owns this role and truly raises the roof with this epic 11 o'clock number. MacDonald makes this piece credible, real and hugely moving. Without question, this is a five-star standing ovation inducing performance which may well redefine Jane from TV host to musical star with true vocal prowess and conviction. For us, she is up there with Dusty as one of the greatest voices in British history. Memory is ludicrously challenging and proves MacDonald's phenomenal ability and skill. She made it look effortless, not a dry eye in the house. The closing 15 minutes of this musical is one of the most brilliant and beautiful pieces of theatre, staging and performance I've ever seen. You can hear an exclusive interview with Jane MacDonald at the end of this interview. Cats is a fun night out in Blackpool and offers a West End Standard cast. You can find out more by googling Cats Blackpool to buy tickets and you've been listening to another review by me Alex Belfield here at celebrityradio.biz where last year we had over 8.6 million minutes viewed on YouTube. This review was recorded on the 22nd of July 2015. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon. Here's our exclusive interview with Jane McDonald about Cats the Musical in Blackpool recorded in April 2015. Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. That's lucky Jane McDonald. How are you? Oh, I'm really, really well. Which one am I, the first or the second? You are both, and you know you are. We first spoke over 20 years ago, and there you were, a meagre entertainer doing cruise ships, probably earning more than most people in show business, but nevertheless, just doing your own thing, minding your own business, and then one day the phone rings, and Andrew Lloyd Webber says, would you like to be the star of Cats? Who knew? Well, certainly not me. Um, and when, when you get that call, you never say no. You just do not say no to Andrew Lloyd Webber. Um, and you think about the audition after you've put the phone down. <laughs> Can I actually do this? <laughs> uh, but it was... Um, I'm just absolutely thrilled. I, I think I'm a little bit in awe of it all and, and humbled by it. Um, I'm grateful. It's just like, blimey, th this is another branch that I'm going to try now. And uh, I could not be more pleased, excited. All the words that I want to say are just... I cannot wait. Uh, this is something I'm really, really excited about, Alex. But it's so well deserved and been a long time coming. I mean, let's face it, there aren't many people who can consistently fill theatres across this country, and you've done that for more than 15 years. It's extraordinary how the public have stayed with you, and I think that's why you get these type of gigs. There's an appeal firstly, but you've got to be able to deliver it. So uh, in terms of the show itself, how tricky is it? How nervous are you about the material? The material is, um, it's funny because David Ian did an interview with me um, a couple of days ago and he said, Andrew Lloyd Webber does not write songs for humans. <laughs> and he's yeah. right. Because yeah. it is really, I've got quite a big range, but bli blimey, I, I, I'm stretching. I've got two notes higher than I've ever sang in my entire career. Um, so that's even stretching me at, at, at my age. Um, and I've got my lowest note and my very highest note. But it, it's great because you're on the edge. Yeah. And that part needs you to feel desperate when you go for that. And desperate is definitely the word I am when I'm going for that, though. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's great. And just the acting now as well, it's, it's, it's the perfect role for me. Because I'm, I'm probably one of the eldest to, um, to ever play Grisabella. 
but it's life experience. She's she's an older cat who's been through it and is desperate and wants to be loved. And it's it's like it's a story. Cats aren't so different to humans in this in this production. Mm. You know, she's shunned by the the younger cats who don't want her around anymore. But she used to be somebody, and now she's just shunned and she just wants to go on to the next life. And of course, eventually she does get picked after that song. What's amazing about you and your career, when I think about what you've just said, is that you've continually worked, you've always been successful since about 1998 when you came off the cruise, and then of course 10 years in Loose Women at the top of your game there. Do you feel a bit like that, that sort of show business does its own thing and you do yours and eventually you come together? Does it sometimes feel like that? It does really. I've been so lucky, Alex, I can't even begin to tell you. Um, I've been lucky, I've been surrounded by some good people. Um, I've learned an awful lot. I do have a thirst for learning and good direction. And if anybody is is willing to come and say, I think you're doing that wrong, I shall cer- certainly take it on board, what they're saying. Um, so I'm, I've been lucky I've had some good tutors along the way, especially now. Working with people like this is just unbelievable. I never thought I'd be being tutored by the best in, in the world. Um, but I have always gone on my gut feeling and um, it's all about the next job I know that sounds really stupid but it's not about the fame it's not about anything that goes with it it's about doing the job that I absolutely love and I've just followed my heart on that really and I've loved doing my own show and I, I will continue to do my own show at some point but um, to you just have to I think half of the success of being still here is knowing what to turn down Right. And I'm going on your gut feeling. And, and I've definitely done that myself. The one thing I do know about you with your live shows is you can pile on the emotion. You have a way of telling a story through song. Um, I guess that's the key to this role, especially with the biggest number, Memory, which everybody's going to look forward to. And I suppose everybody's going to judge you on. What are you doing right now to prepare yourself for it? Because it is a mammoth task, isn't it, to get from one end to the other of that piece of music? It is. It's uh, it's a good five minute number in uh, uh, that whole particular thing. I think just drawing on life experience. Uh, there's one. Uh, really, I have broken down a few times singing this with the directors and the musical supervisors on this because it's heart rendering. I mean, the lyric from T. S. Eliot um, is is really quite deep. Mm. And then this beautiful melody that goes alongside it with the string section and everything that Andrew's written is so emotive and so emotional. Um, and when she falls to the floor because she's just had enough, she can't, she's dying basically. Yeah. And then this little voice gets her through and she just looks up and then she goes for that big note. It is so emotional. And it is my job now um, to put that over to the audience. And, and I sincerely hope, like you say, my own shows that I do that, that I'm gonna do it in this. Uh, and if I can, portray that story over to the audience then I I can't wait I think you're going to nail it. I don't think it's going to be an issue at all because one thing that you do so naturally is bringing that emotion to song. I always wonder, though, how you make sure it's at 90% and not 110 because you can't be a blubbering wreck on stage, can you? There's a fine line between emotion and you ruining it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, even in the press, I mean, I had some fans turn up just in case it was me. God love them. And, uh, And they could see the tears in my eyes from where they were. And still in the press, the press... Yeah, it was only me and piano, um, but I was still really emotional with it because it is such an emotional song. Um, and when there were 600 people there and me and a piano, that, that did make me cry a bit, I'll yeah. be honest. Yeah. But um, it, it, it's such an, a, a beautiful piece of music. And it's in, in the context of Cats, it's not a pop song. You know, everybody knows it as, as this lovely little pop song that's played on the radio and everything. Yeah. It's not going to be like that at all. It's it's very very deep and very emotional. So I, I can't I can't wait. But I'll just have to look after myself. I yeah. won't be out clubbing it every night. I will just twice a week maybe, but not every night. That's disappointing. I was going to put my name down for at least three nights. <laughs> You can have that at any time. Do you know what I, I wonder about you is at this point in your career, let's face it, we all need breaks and we all need chances, but you could just carry on touring and selling out as you do. Is it humbling when somebody like the Lord picks up the phone and says, come and work with me? And is it equally as intimidating? Because no matter how big you think you are, he's bigger and richer, isn't he? 
Oh my gosh, he's the, he's the ultimate empresario, isn't he? Um, it, whatever you think of Andrew Lloyd Webber, he's the top. Yeah. And and like you say, when he picks the phone up and gets in touch and says, "Come and star in Cats," you drop everything and do it. Um, the thing was, I'd just cleared my year. That that was fate again. You know what my life's Alex. It's yeah. just full of fateful things that happen. And I did um, a very grueling year last year. You know, I did over 97 performances, all straight after one another. Yeah. And um, I thought, I need a rest. I do need a rest. So I said to my agent, look, can we clear my year? Because I, I just need to grow some veg. I wanted a veg plant. <laughs> and I'm even had the, you know, the conversation with somebody who was going to put it together for us and we were going <laughs> to potatoes and, and we were going to turn into... Tom and Barbara <laughs> and then I got the call from Andrew Lloyd Webber and I thought no I'm more Margot I'm yeah. more Margot I'll just go and buy it at the farm shop I was going to say you can afford your parsnips from Waitrose <laughs> can't you so basically that that was fate yeah. because if I'd have carried on just doing what I normally do I would definitely have, have not been able to um, free myself up to do, to do this part mm. so fate and also, is it nice to be part of a team? Because it is Cats the Musical. That is the star and the reason people are coming and you're the name that's drawing them in. Is that comforting to know that finally you can hand that over to someone else and go, right, you can worry about the lighting, the scenery, the rest of the cast, the band turning up? Yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> I'll, all I have to do is get dressed up as a cat and stagger <laughs> on. Uh, sing me song. And it's lovely. It, all that... You know, because you know that I'm a bit of a control freak and, and I've been doing it a long, long time. And to actually just sit back, take direction and be an artist mm. is just a joy. And, and I've got a bit of a life. So it, it, is, it is absolutely wonderful. And knowing that the production is the best in the world, you, you can't, can't compete with that. So it, it's just wonderful. I went to see the set last night in London. And oh my goodness me, it's just phenomenal. And, and mm. to be stood on that stage last night and and think this is going to Blackpool, my favourite venue ever. Yeah. And it's just going to look spectacular. I can't wait for Blackpool for, for this to happen because um, it's just going to be so sex spectacular. I think they said sex spectacular then, didn't I? <laughs> well, talking of which, I'm thinking of these young male dancers who are going to be walking around naked backstage. Will that be a new thrill for you? No, I, if, do you know, if I, if I could be bothered, I'd have a right good time. But, you know, I'm, I'm the old cat. I'm really not bothered. Um, and I'm very, very happy at home. So uh, I don't need naked bodies backstage to, to make me excited. I just need to look into my other half eyes and that does it for me. Do you know, and I think that's so important, isn't it? You can't have contentment and happiness if you're unstable at home and you've found this sort of equilibrium where you can make the business work for you and also be happy at home. And there's no point being happy at home if you're never there. Correct. And, and that was something we, we had to discuss. Um, you, you really have got to compromise and think, no, that, that, that time has got to be ours. And, and I am very conscious of, of not spoiling what I've got. Um, and it's very easy to get carried away with the showbiz life. Yeah. And it's, you know, there's so much temptation on the road as well. But I realise I've got a keeper at home yeah. and, um, and he's, he's adorable and I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed with the people around me and, uh, and I, I don't take it for granted. And, you know, we all think we're smart asses. I work with you at Loose Women, and, of course, we lost Linda last year and then the news of Carol's cancer. We all think we're clever, but you never know what's around the corner, do you? Well, you don't, and I think, you know, you have to live every day as if it's your last. Because, and I, I, it has changed, you know, having friends very close to you, because I, I didn't just lose Linda, I lost three very close people within a month. Mm. And it knocked me for six last year. And I just thought, what, what am I doing? And I think that's one of the reasons I cleared the year. Um, because I thought I need some time to just grieve as well. Yeah. Um, and I ha I've had that time now. And um, you have to, to move on and, and live for the people that you've lost. Yeah. And I know that was a big part of your show in the beginning. One of the reasons that people fell in love with you was the stories about your dad and that he was with you every night, even though he wasn't there in person. Yeah, and and the songs that I've written for people who've passed, you know, it, you do feel it. There's just something that happens in the auditorium, Alex, and, and I don't know what it is, and I don't want to question what it is. It's just something that happens, and as long as that keeps happening, then I'm sure the audience and myself will still keep doing it. Hmm. 
I think McGiff's handled her cancer so bravely and so inspiringly. How's she doing? As far as I know, she's doing extremely well. Um, we, we text, we, we're, you know, we, we're always in touch, but yeah. she's a fighter and I'm, I'm sure she's going to get through it. You'd have to ask her yourself, really. Yeah. Um, but, you know, my love goes to her. Tenacity is not her problem, is it? She's one of the bravest people I think I've ever met personally and in the business. She just is a fighter. She is. She is. And she's she's great. And I'm very blessed that she's um, been part of my life for yeah. such a long time. 18 months ago, you decided to leave Loose Women and we wondered whether you'd ever work again. The press wondered whether you'd ever work again. And actually, it's been liberating and the thing that's made you because all of these opportunities, I believe, would not have come if you'd have been on that show. It's funny how, and you're not I'm not the first to say it, that when you're on a daily show, jobs just don't come your way because they almost don't want to be associated with it. It turns out this was one of the smartest moves you've made professionally, isn't it? Well, I, yeah, <laughs> I can't really deny that. Um you do I, I, a lot of people said are you mad you know and I said no it's time for me to, to hang my chair up um, but you know there was brand new changes coming and and I think it's worked it's worked now the girls on there are great and um, it's just completely different to what it used to be before mm. and I think it did need a shake up and and I'm, I'm glad that I didn't stay with the new format um, I'm, I'm very much part of the old regime on that show and I loved every single minute of being in that 10 years sat next to Carol mm. and, and all the others. Uh, we did have a great time on there. We were loud, you know, and terribly risque. Uh, we were different, weren't we, really? But um, it's a fantastic vehicle to be part of and, and I'm glad I had 10 great years. I mean, and that lineup of you and McGiff and Vorderman and people like that, I mean, the ratings were through the roof. People did love that chemistry. There's no denying it, especially Denise Walsh with you as well. When you two were on the same panel, they were fireworks, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, they always were. I was a bit like Mary Whitehouse, you see. I, <laughs> I was always for the older viewer because I knew my mother were watching and that's why I used to keep my P's and Q's right. Um, well, not it, always. No, not always, I must admit, especially in the breaks and you've seen that. But um, it, it was great fun. And, and I've been lucky with the career choices that I've had. You know, I've, I've had a, a, a very successful career, thank goodness, so far. And um, and it's been great, and I've enjoyed every single minute of it. And I think I think this is what you've got to remember. This is showbiz, and and it's it's great. We're very very lucky to be in a position that we're in. Um, and I, for one, just love every bit of the job that I do. And this this new experience for me now. And I'm sorry, I didn't uh, do the question that you asked me. To be with a team of great cast, and I've met four of them at Blackpool, is just a joy. Mm -hmm. And to, to have that talent around you and know that they're going to deliver it every night is, is just a joy because you can't fail when that is so strong underneath you as well. It's great. And they're gorgeous, gorgeous people. You had another call last year which came in and they said, would you like to be the star of the biggest pantomime in Britain? Punching over 2,500 people at the Hippodrome in Birmingham every single night, twice a day. Um, how was that? That's different, isn't it, pantomime? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. Um, I had a blast. I had a blast. And I was a bit mad with myself that I'd not done it sooner. Mm. Um, I'd been offered Panto. Thank goodness the, the offer didn't go away for, for all those years. Um, and it was the last time they were going to ask me. But of course, I was out of Loose Women then and I had chance to do it. So um, before, I've always been tied to a, a, a contract on television and I was never allowed to take more than three months off at a time. So mm -hmm. for the first time ever, I was allowed to, to, to do it. And I had a absolute ball. It was great working with a, a fantastic cast and seeing the reaction every night and the comedy and the singing, it was just it was just great. I look forward to doing another one if I got offered another one. Isn't it exciting now wondering what's around the corner? I mean, you're now booked with this cat show in Blackpool through the summer. Um, its sales, I hear, are already doing incredibly well. Um, you're going to be there July, uh, August, beginning of September. Who knows when the phone might ring next? It's thrilling, isn't it, that after this long, people still are interested. You're still at your top of your game. You're still getting the big gigs. And you're a survivor. I think that's a testament to your talent and, most importantly, your voice, because I think the trouble with Loose Women for 10 years was that people forgot you could sing. They just thought, you're a gobshite. Do you know what I mean? Well, that as well. That was <laughs> <what I'm gonna laughs> I love that. That's great. 
No, but it's true. I mean, you have a phenomenal voice. I truly believe you're one of the greatest voices this country's ever produced for the stage, and your audience know it. Oh, that's that so nice of you to say. I'm very humbled by that. I'm very grateful. Um, I just do what I do, and um, I'm so thrilled that people like it, seem to like it. I'm, I'm so grateful to my fans. They're, they're just so lovely and, and so supportive, and uh, they... They just keep coming back, and, and I love them for that. And they know that I love them as well. Um, the, it's, it's just lovely. I'm very, very blessed. Have you tried the cat's makeup on yet? No. <laughs> That's going to be a bit strange, isn't it? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, though. It's, it's, um, it's going to be great, because I can get into character then as well. Mm. It's not going to be me. It's... Grisabella. Yeah, I don't know about that. I spoke to my mate Dean Chisnell, who's uh, in Birmingham at the minute doing Shrek. He's in, on tour for two years, and for ten and a half hours a day on a matinee day, he has to look at himself as a green monster in the mirror. It must be a bit strange sometimes. You have to pinch yourself, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll probably curl up on the sofa with a sauce of milk like a in the interval, you know. Does Ed well, still yeah, allow you on the bed, by the way? Yeah, just, just about. He's got me a basket now. Has he? He's got me a litter <laughs> in the bathroom, but... Uh, but he, yeah, I'm allowed on the bed. <laughs> this is brilliant. I think this is fantastic news for you and for your fans and for everybody as well who will see that you're a phenomenal singer. You can't phone this show in. There's no hiding behind memory. If you can't knock that out the park, you're going to be gone and you wouldn't have got the gig. And I think to get the endorsement from Andrew Lloyd Webber, who frankly has the pick of the crop, he could get anybody. You do realise that, don't you? I, I know. And I know I'm very, very lucky and uh, very grateful. I keep saying the word grateful, but it's, it's truly what I am, Alex. I never, ever take anything for granted, as you know, in this business. Yeah. Um, I'm thrilled, thrilled. It's a gift. This this performance is a gift for me. Um, and I just hope I do him proud. I can't wait to see it. It's on at the Blackpool Opera House through the summer. Jay McDonald is going to be live. Is it eight times a week? Are you doing matinees yeah. as well? Yes, I am. Good eight, Lord. eight shows a week. I know. Don't. Don't remind me. Yeah, OK. And to be part of that legacy, even if you do nothing else, let's face it, is going to be a triumph, isn't it? It is to have to have the star of cats on your CV isn't a bad way to go. Um, I've done some amazing things in my career already, but I think this this is probably up there in the top two, top three. So I, I couldn't be more thrilled. I've got a feeling this might be the beginning. Never mind the end. Let's see. Oh, wow. Cats the musical will be on in Blackpool. Jay McDonald is one of my favourite people and one of the most talented stars ever in the UK. You can find out more by going on the website. Just Google Cats the Musical Blackpool and you'll get your tickets there. Jane, great to talk to you. And you. Thank you so much, Alex.